Of course, when it came to wit and charm, John F. Kennedy probably retired the prize. His memory reminds us how far a little self-deprecating humor can go. Remember modesty? When a small boy asked Kennedy how he became a war hero, Kennedy replied, it was absolutely involuntary. They sank my boat. <laughs> In 1958, then Senator Kennedy was being touted as a presidential hopeful, but he was shattered by scurrilous rumors that his rich father would buy the race. So at the Gridiron Club dinner, JFK drew a slip of paper from his pocket and proudly announced that he had a telegram from his generous daddy. He read aloud, Dear Jack, don't buy a single vote more than is necessary. I'll be damned if I'm going to pay for a landslide. <laughs> The press was enthralled. When JFK's president held his first televised press conference in January 1961, 60 million captivated viewers were glued to their TV sets, a record only eclipsed by the 70 million who watched the Beatles debut on the Ed Sullivan Show three years later in 1964. I have often wondered what the Beatles' poll numbers would have looked like in Iowa and New Hampshire in that presidential year. Now, Ronald Reagan was a no less sunny personality and a past master, of course, of media relations. When he became president, he said, I think that most of the time, the overwhelming majority of reporters do a fine job. And as a former reporter, I know just how tough their job can be. Nevertheless, Reagan had a sometimes bumpy relationship with the press. Then on March 30th, 1981, he was shot and nearly killed outside this very hotel, the Washington Hilton, as he was about to duck into his limousine. A bullet lodged within an inch of his heart. Reagan was scheduled to speak at, yes, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And so he telephoned in this line instead, quote, if I could give you just one little bit of advice, when somebody tells you to get into a car quick, do it. <laughs> That was a touch of class that has been sorely missing in our political culture in recent years. It was a subtle reminder that whether Republicans or Democrats, we are all bona fide members of Team USA and not members of enemy camps.